why don't we just start as time's up? We have three presenters here on the, the session of international environmental governance. So Professor Chong Jae Ho will present about the trade imbalance between Korea and Latin America. And Professor Yi tae -yuk will be covering the issue of difference governance in the Amazon from the, I think, equatorial perspective. The Professor Ha Sang Seok will cover again the rights of nature in Ecuador and Latin America. And the second and third presentations are, I think, well aligned. Uh, meanwhile, we have a little different topic in the first uh, presentation. I think, I think we have good enough diversity here. Okay, so without any further ado, shall we start to invite the presenters one by one? So, Professor Chung, yes. you take the podium. Thank you for introducing me and welcome to my presentation. Um, I'll do my best not to exceed the presentation time given to me. Uh, before starting, uh, I wanna say thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, my name is Che Ho Jung, and I'm currently working for the Institute for Future Growth at Korea University as a research professor. It would have been uh, better if I could present my research in person, uh, but that is unfortunate. Uh, today, I'm going to review the trade imbalance between Korea and Latin America from 2005 to 2016 from a value-added perspective. Uh, one thing that I'd like to say uh, before the presentation is that uh, this paper is just at the level of a working paper. So today, uh, the main purpose of this presentation is to share my ideas and get feedback from you to further develop my uh, research. Uh, before we start, I'd like to look over the outline of my presentation. Among the six sections, uh, due to the uh, 20 minutes presentation time limit, I'm going to highlight the introduction and research uh, sections. For the rest of the sections, I'll briefly go over just key points. Uh, here you can find my research question. Uh, so far, from growth exports perspective, there are many papers pointing out the uh, trade imbalance between them because uh, Korea has always benefited as seen in the left figure. Uh, even though the amount of the trade surplus switched from increase to decrease uh, since uh, 2011, Korea's sustainable gain could lead to various conflicts with Latin America. Uh, however, let's see the right figure. Uh, these two lines are made by 903 bilateral trade relations from 43 countries in the world. Uh, the green is the aggregate of gross exports generated by each country, and the red is the aggregate of value added generated by the same country. Uh, you can see that the gap between these two lines is getting larger over time. For example, <clears throat> the gap in 2013 is about three times larger than the gap in 2000. So it is necessary to examine in depth whether Korea is really taking full advantage of the trade surplus. And that's why I started to research this topic. Now here, taking the exports of iPhone from China to the US as an example, I'm going to briefly explain why this gap happens. Uh, let's suppose that the iPhone is the only product traded between the two countries. Then as you can see in the left figure, the country that benefits from iPhone exports is China, not the US. In other words, China is described as making great gains through the trade. Uh, however, if we look at these trade relations from a value added perspective, the story becomes completely different. Uh, according to the right figure representing the smile curve of iPhone, uh, since China is only in charge of assembly over the iPhone production process, 
uh, China's actual amount of value added is very small. That is, uh, Interestingly, the US, which suffers from a large trade deficit with China, creates larger value added than China. So while China benefits from growth exports perspective, the US benefits from a value added perspective, then which country would really benefit from the trade? So, uh, this paper contributes by providing a new interpretation of the trade imbalance between Korea and Latin America uh, from a value-added uh, perspective. Uh, for example, most of the previous literature documented that the trade imbalance measured by traditional approach could cause trade friction, import regulation, demand for correction of a trade imbalance or diplomatic conflict. However, uh, like the previous iPhone example, uh, if the amount of value-added trade imbalance changes substantially, like the example shown below, uh, these mentioned concerns could be newly interpreted. Uh, in order to derive the amount of value-added from its exports, we must consider two things, which are data and decomposition methodology. So firstly, when it comes to the data, an inter-country input-output table is needed. Uh, among three or four commonly used ICIO tables, I chose the OECD's ICIO table that includes relatively more Latin American countries than the others. Uh, the OECD's table can be thought of as arranging a country's national input output table shown in the left figure for 64 countries in just one square matrix. Uh, I'm not gonna explain the detailed components of the table due to the time limit, but if you want, there are many references on that, so it would be better to refer to them. Uh, the OECD's ICIO table that I used is the uh, 2018 edition that includes uh, 64 countries in the world and the sample period from 2005 to 2016. Uh, when it comes to the industries, I used 36 industrial sectors classified by ISIC revision four and the Latin American countries included in this table are the seven countries on the screen. Uh, secondly, I applied the decomposition methodology developed by Wang in 2013 in order to derive the actual value added from its export data. Uh, I described the first matrix for decomposition on the screen, but since the detailed process is very complex, I'm not going to explain it. But for those who are interested in the detailed process, I included Wang's paper at the end of this material. Uh, after going through various uh, procedures, we can finally get the 16 value added terms shown on the screen. I wrote the final formulas for each term. Uh, but please note that uh, what is important here is not how they are calculated shown on the screen, but what they mean exactly. Uh, I'm going to skim through this table. The 16 value-added terms are largely divided into two categories. Uh, the first is the value-added generated by exporting country, and the second is the value-added not generated by exporting country. Uh, on the one hand, the value-added generated by exporting country is divided into domestic value-added and net returned domestic value-added again. Uh, you can find their definitions in the table. Uh, when going back to the iPhone example before, the domestic value-added is the value-added created by China. On the other hand, the value-added not generated by exporting country uh, consists of double counting and foreign value added. 
in the iPhone example before, foreign value added refers to the value added generated by Japan, Germany, and Korea. Uh, double counting is the part that occurs due to intermediary trade. Uh, so I reconstructed the amount of a trade balance between Korea and Latin America using the aggregate of the terms from one to A. Uh, here, uh, the main findings are shown on the screen. Uh, when it comes to the left figure, the green is the trade balance from gross exports perspective. And the orange is the trade balance from a value added perspective. Even from a value added perspective, it is true that Korea benefits from trade with Latin America. However, the amount of value added trade surplus decreased significantly compared to the traditional approach. It is because the value added ratio in exports in Korea is smaller than Latin America, which can be seen in the two figures on the right. Uh, furthermore, <clears throat> another interesting fact is that from 2005 to 2015, uh, the value-added ratio in Latin America was relatively constant. Uh, but while for Korea, it decreased a lot from 2005 to 2012. Uh, therefore, as, as shown in the left, the trade balance measured by exports increased from 2005 to 2012 while the value-added trade balance was uh, relatively constant. Uh, in order to analyze this trend in more detail, I calculated the trade balance for the three industries, which are uh, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and mining denoted as A industry, and manufacturing industry and service industry. Uh, first, in the case of uh, a industry, Korea had a trade deficit, uh, but both, both exports and value added trade balance are entirely driven by Latin America, considering that the, uh, the exports from Korea are very small. Uh, second, you can see that the industry that has the greatest influence on the trade imbalance is the manufacturing industry. Uh, over time, the gap of a trade balance between exports and value added got larger repeatedly. It is because the Korean manufacturing industry is more exposed to the global production network. Uh, I'll reveal the specific results by detail in my final paper. Uh, third, the gap of a trade balance between exports and value added in the service industry also increased because the value-added ratio in Korea exports uh, decreased as shown in the, in the upper right figure. Uh, these results will also be shown in, the, in detail later in the paper. Uh, finally, the results of this working paper are as follows. Uh, first, even from a value-added perspective, uh, Korea still had a trade surplus with Latin America. Uh, but uh, but the amount of a trade surplus was greatly reduced when evaluating value added compared to the traditional approach. Specifically, as shown in the table on the screen, the value added ratio in exports decreased from 2005 and then increased again since 2013. Uh, based on my analysis, it was because while Korea had a, a large gap between exports and value added, Latin America had a relatively uh, small gap. Uh, by the way, this figure shows each case of the seven Latin American countries with Korea. Uh, interestingly, when measuring trade balance by value added, the trade balance of Argentina, Chile, and Peru change it from positive to negative. Uh, today, uh, I'm not going to cover each case at all, but I think it'll be uh, very interesting to analyze trade relations of each country 
uh, with Korea in future studies. Uh, when it comes to the previous figure on this page, uh, the left figure shows the exports and value added generated by Korea, and the right figure is for uh, Latin America. Uh, unfortunately, since this is just a, a working paper, uh, I'm not I'm not going to deal with this topic today. Uh, so I, I cannot provide more detailed analysis results today, but I look forward to publishing the details through the, uh, my final paper. Uh, if you provide a lot of feedback, it will help me a lot and I'll be very grateful. And thanks for listening to my uh, presentation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jung, for your presentation. Um, what I can suggest is if you have any imminent question, you can raise it now. Okay. Otherwise, let's leave it for Q&A session after taking all those presentations all together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If you don't, so let's quickly move to uh, Dr. Itehyuk's presentation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chung. So let's leave this for now. Okay, Dr. Lee. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for letting me take part in this very timely manner international conference as a presenter. I uh, hope that everyone to find uh, any interesting aspect in this sharing. Um, first, I would like to share my, uh, what have been basically thinking over Latin America as a whole, uh, particularly in the vein of a development perspective, uh, which is somewhat linked to the notion of today's conference main theme, which is, I guess, the ecological civilization. To reiterate, as a person who do care for Latin American people and their society and also nature, I have been, I have been kept thinking about how uh, in what ways Latin America could be better in terms of living conditions, which should be uh, conciliated with the, its nature. Uh, I guess as a human being, as today's keynote speaker, Professor Che Jae Chan also state that we are uh, homo sapiens, which means that we are intelligent being. Uh, thus, we do need to reconsider how we can cooperate with the nature on the basis of the development. Uh, in the sense that development should be a sustainable development. Um, okay, um, so then how? Uh, the subsequently, I do bring the two basic concepts that we shared like on the Amazon governance in Brazil and Ecuador, respectively. And then we will learn some lessons from each case study. Here is a concept, uh, which obviously I do need to further study to crystallizing and then ultimately um, this research and even over the entire of my academic life is intending to finding an alternative development path which Latin America should be centered as away from the Western focused approach. Uh, having said that, um, as you see that this is outline of today's sharing and uh, first, starting with the research question, which is how in what ways coexistence and win-win play in the realm of the Amazon. Uh, in the first section, also showing some pictures and graphs and key lens. And second, moving to the Brazilian case. And third, um, going to the Ecuadorian uh, Amazon case. And the fourth, I will intend to show the two by two matrix utilizing the um, coexistence and in and Brazil and Ecuador case. And the fifth, I'm trying to identify the missing linkage based on the international political economy framework. Uh, six, um, suggesting and thinking over how and in what ways Latin American alternative development path can be moved forward. All right. Um, So um, slide four, I guess this is the, uh, so guess, uh, guess where might be. Um, in fact, two different countries, uh, although it shares the same spot. 
Uh, I guess anyone can guess. <laughs> um, in picture from one to three are the Ecuadorian Amazon, the particularly Yasuni ITT. And then picture four is a Brazilian part of Amazon. Actually, I've been, I've been there two different um, places. In Ecuador with my student, um, which was uh, three and four years ago. And then the Brazilian one, I went up for there for my field work, for my uh, PhD work. Um, then, um, um, yes, um, this is a graph uh, which denotes the two different trajectory in terms of freight loss in the Amazon region. Uh, according to this graph, Brazilian part of Amazon forest loss is getting smaller while the other side Amazon is getting worse, right? Uh, thus, it comes to the question, why are they different? Uh, so why Brazil confirms norms uh, environment friendly development in Amazon area, whereas others like the including Ecuador are less inclined to do so? Uh, how and in what way is the coexistence and we, we operate in Brazilian Amazon, which is Eastern Amazon side and then the Western Amazon side respectively. Um, so once again, research angle and lens uh, to, you, to what extent and, and in what ways uh, coexistence and in play out Brazil and then Ecuador, Amazon respectively. Well, I mean, um, so I'm happy to share uh, basically three important phases step that I believe the shape the Brazilian Amazon but um, I guess the, uh, I have to finish up uh, within uh, roughly 20 minutes. I'm just gonna skipping over, but I just gonna highlighting that the uh, three critical junctures uh, that is finding A, Amazon, and also the uh, second the phase important that shapes fragile and part of Amazon is the tragedy of rubber. And the third is the emergence of cow. Uh, then, um, then I'm looking to that one, the uh, main aspect is that Bra Brazil faced and adopted, even accommodate with the notion of actors in relation to the international non-government, as you see this slide. And then, in fact, uh, commodity, including soybean, uh, is a key export item towards China as you see in this graph, right? So more than half, more than the 50% uh, is actually um, in terms of soybean is also the iron ore heading to the uh, China, right? Then, so that's why, so illegal deforestation for soy production, in particular in the north of the Mato Grosso has been expanded, yeah. But here, the um, but working with the um, the notion of intermestic, which is the domestic and international NGOs shapes and the curve the expansion of illegal deforestation in Amazon by declaring the soya moratorium. Now this, I guess, implies that the coexistence of win win between nature and human being are relatively recognized. So here saying that what we found is that the before the moratorium, 30% of soil expansion occurred through the deforestation. And after the moratorium, almost none did. Only about 1% of the new soil expansion came at the expense of forest. So um, to reiterate, INGO, which is international government, non-government organization, with a special focus on Greenpeace and local NGO and actors, in this case, stakeholders, in the process of supply chain governance, play a critical role in shaping the Brazilian Amazon development. Then I'm looking to the uh, Ecuadorian the case. So what about the uh, Ecuadorian Amazon? Actually, the lady called Patricia Gualinga uh, went to the Paris 
uh, when the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change uh, Conference of uh, the Paris 21 th that was held in Paris, she went up there that the, the person uh, that her and her country voice be heard. Like we are here in Paris to tell the world that protecting living first is a solution to climate change. Then why she went she went up to the the Paris? Actually, um, so before actually um studying this slide, um, as you uh, might know that uh, very recently there was a presidential elections in Ecuador, right? Um, three main candidates among 16 are very important in terms of Ecuador. And the presidential election frame was, was a uh, correalism, anti-correalism, correalism versus uh, anti-correalism. And then Yaku was suffering from the underrepresented people, uh, particularly for those who are live in Amazon and Andes, which are related to the nature and is yet to be uh, actually, I just found that the one hour ago, and they just de declared that the um, second uh, the round uh, was the game of lasso, and then the um, the um, uh, was not the Paris was not able to the, enter in, but uh, so that means that there are still the issue in the Ecuador. But then, giving to once again to looking to this slide, um, back to the once again the, the notion of the uh, correalismo which was the um, 2006 and seven, uh, under the regime of Rafael Correa, who was at the time was elected by the indigenous support who are men located in the Amazon area, changed drastically his position toward the uh, objection of the right of nature and to large extent to the notion of uh, Pachamama uh, by letting the Amazon territory, particularly Yasuni ITT to China to drill out. So this is actually the things that has happened uh, in the 2013. So that's why uh, Amazon Watch uh, is one of the leading INGO that focus on Ecuadorian Amazon to be protected. So this is a, a website they work out. I just said that in fact, the China needs uh, energy to uh, like oil uh, that comes from Ecuador. Thus, China invests a lot globally, particularly in relation to the energy related. As you see that the Ecuador is highly dependent on, uh, on China. So the, the China had a consortium to end this petroleum Ecuador by way of shareholders. Here is uh, CNPC and the Sinopec. Given that, so by way of Ecuador, which is highly dependent on uh, upon natural resources and particularly one single uh, country. Uh, so there are some protests. So it that provides very limited room to maneuver. As you see that the, uh, the numbers, right? So in this slide, Ecuador is highly dependent on China. So I kind of developed the uh, metrics. Uh, in fact, that uh, I still uh, need more indicators to uh, crystallize, uh, but uh, this is more the um, trying to kind of share the uh, my idea. That eventually, I'll be uh, uh, working as a the research paper, but then this is kind of metrics that the two by two matrix to large extent to, to sum up the viewpoint towards Brazil and the Ecuador Amazon, respectively, by the angle of coexistence and win win which I stressed out this approach is relative once again. So, um, so given that, um, I'm not be able to covering every single characteristics of each theory of political economy of development. However, the common denominator among these possibilities is Western focused view and also embedded in the capitalism which means to lesser extent to the human, human being and nature. Thus, this is room for the alternative way of thinking of development by employing the Latin American particularistic uh, characteristics. So uh, I'd like to provide a mechanism and refining a parameter 
of nature and human being by way of fully diving into refining the wisdom of Latin American way of development, development path. So here I, I, do, I do suggest that the concept like South-South cooperation, that is as a way of solidarity, right? In this case, like the employing the Korean New Deal policies, like Green New Deal, I guess is a way of collaborating with Latin America and, and Korea. So um, I guess the, um, my presentation is all about today and then many things indeed. I hope that um, everyone find this open lab, uh, this lecture, uh, open lecture, right? Um, interesting and then useful in the way thinking further uh, for, uh, for also for the Institute of Latin American Studies at the uh, Hangul University of Foreign Studies as well. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you, Dr. Lee, for your interesting presentation. And I remember when you say Asuni, I remember I, I watched the movie Asuni Man. Actually, I was looking for some sources from there, <laughs> and then I will I will show you later about about the story of this and very interesting. Okay, and shall we move to the next presenter, uh, Professor Ha? <sighs> what? I think it's uh, the same idea with uh, no Doctor Lee talking about you know a lot of some the Amazon Amazon area in in, in Ecuador history and then even uh, yeah, emphasize some you know the current issue about Yasuni development project you know with, with um a little bit conflict with China you no know, as new developer there yeah uh in this time I slightly I move into your attention to the the concept you know even uh, Dr. Lee mentioned about the, the derecho de la naturaleza in the English light of nature here, but you know, uh, a little bit deeply we can, uh, we must understand you know, what, what kind of meaning of the right of nature. For example, Pachamama, he also mentioned about, you know, Pachamama here. Uh, it's not just about philosophy, it's about some, you know, the scientific, some knowledge involved with some, you know, the sustainable development model. Everybody talking about, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, also, uh, our uh, the, the huge project, you know, now you, you are participating in this conference and then, you know, uh, in the morning also many, you know, the scholars mentioned about, you know, light of nature because, you know, uh, it, it looks like some, you know, symbolize some, you know, the, the, the Latin American the ecological civilization, you know, some concept here. So I think it's just quite important to understanding the light of nature, what is meaning, what kind of, you know, the understanding, you know, when we understand that this, the deep concept of, you know, some, some philosophy, you know. Uh, the title name is the light of nature in Ecuador, Latin America, not just about Ecuador, you know, in between neology and rhetoric, you know, that is my, you know, uh, presenting title, you know, today. Uh, Sorry. You can see, you know, the, I think it's uh, these this provisions, you know, uh, in, in Ecuadorian constitution, uh, quite this famous, some, you know, sentence or some articles, you know, many scholars now, uh, you know, cited his, uh, their papers and then, you know, the articles then to find out, you know, the understanding what kind of meaning, light of nature, you know. So uh, briefly, we can see, you know, the, the important part, you know, the chapter seven in Ecuadorian constitution, light of nature, uh, article 71, nature, or Pachamama, you know, in some, you know, indigenous, you know, the, the language, you know, Pachamama, also mentioned about in many, you know, the, the Andean countries, you know, the uh, with some many indigenous community they're using you know uh, broadly or some you know a uh, normal you know pachamama like that uh, tierra madre yeah something like that yeah i can read i can read continuous you know nature or pachamama uh, has a light that is an important term you know provision article 72 nature has the light 
to be uh, restored, you know. Uh, the Article 71, you know, you know, the, the Constitution declares, you know, nature as a some subject. But, you know, it's comparing to Article 71, 72 is meaning uh, kind of some, you know, object meaning of some, you know, nature. We can understand, you know, the nature got some, you know, uh, some subject or object, you know, both of them. And then uh, the constitution move, you know, the mention about some, you know, the, some actors involved with some, you know, the, the light of nature. The first actor, it came out some, you know, the state. State shall apply preventive and restrictive measures, you know, something like that. And then uh, more expanded actor we can find out, you know, we saw some article 74, person, community, people, a nation shall have the light benefit from the environment, the natural wealth, enabling them to enjoy the good way of living. That is a good way of living. So we can say, summa uh, causa, something like that, you know, in, in Indiana's community, Indiana's language as well. So we must remember it's quite important to some prohibition, you know. Uh, and we, uh, when I discuss, you know, some some rounding, some kind of some concept, conflict, the meaning, you know, uh, all of these kind of you know the argument related to some you know these kind of prohibitions. Anyway, we must understand it quite as an important some you know prohibitions. But uh, thinking about that, you know, the nature of light, light of nature, you know, it's not coming, you know, from uh, Ecuador or some, you know. Uh, some kind of some indigenous community actually, you know, this concept the originated from some, you know, uh, 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 brilliant to some scholars argument or books, uh, the ideas, you know, for example, 1972, Christopher Stone's article, should the trees have standing to the legal light, you know, something like that. And then uh, after some 10 years later, you know, 19, uh, 1979, uh, Roderick Nash, the light of nature, history of in, environmental ethnic kind of some book he published and then, you know, uh, briefly uh, he summarized in our history, how and why the light on this subject, such as uh, slaves, women, nature, have struggled to expand the body of the legal light to include themselves or something like that. And then uh, currently, you know, 2001, Thomas Berry, the origin differentiation of the law of light. Okay, this is a kind of book as well, and described how well members of the earth community possess the inherent light, you know. That, you know, this kind of idea, you know, uh, continuous, you know, in, in, in the, the history, you know, not just about uh, the old concept, you know, and, but why Ecuador important? We can say about, you know, in 2008, Ecuador became the, the first country in the world to recognize the light of nature in its national constitution. That is important. But thinking about that, you know, the, the constitution, we, we can say about, you know, uh, written by some idea, ideal, ideal knowledge sometimes, you know, uh, Slightly little bit difference of some, you know, the real law or institution. But, you know, uh, in the case of Ecuador, it's not just about remaining in constitution, the light of nature applied the in real, you know, the case. The, the first case we can remember is Pilcabamba River case, you know. Uh, at the time, river got the, 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 you know, the correct light of the nature, you know. There is a, the first case in the court, you know, the, the you know, judge, the, the, you know, some, some cited some, you know, light of nature and then make it uh, some, some great sentence anyway to the, the, the you know, Pilkabamba River, you know, Pilkabamba River, Karasam, right. Yeah, dissolved or preserved, you know, something like that. The second case we can remember, it was, you know, the, quite a special case, I, I, I think, you know, 2015, the Galapagos shark fin case. That case was important. And then uh, the UNESCO or some international, some, some you know, institution, uh, they sometimes they cite this kind of case, you know. 
we, we, we think it's a shark is kind of some, the fish or some, you know, animal, but even shark are also light, something like that. That is uh, the case, you know, which means, you know, the, the, the constitution or right of nature is not remaining in the, the provision of a constitution. You know, in reality, it applies, you know, the, the, the real case anyway. So until now, light of nature has been applied by us. I identified the three third pathway, the most first one, you know, civil society pressure. You know, from the civil society, they, they you know, uh, push a lot of these kinds of, you know, uh, apply, or, you know. And then the second case is the government action. Sometimes, you know, also Dr. Lee mentioned about, you know, Rafael Correa or some, you know, the, the politician, sometimes they, they use the light of nature, you know, Slightly, you know, a political reason or some, you know, political tool as well. You know, I can I can explain a little bit about this kind of, you know, uh, case. The, the third path, you know, we can say about the application by the legal epistemic the community. For example, you know, the judging, you know, with kind of some uh, the, the ecological mind, you know, something like that. Judging, you know, the made it make it is it is you know sentence, you know. Sometimes you know, this kind of you know, is this kind of things working, you know. So th this pathway is deeper not only by the type of actor, but also the its motivation. For example, political reason or something. Like that. So uh, this is important. Why Ecuador in Ecuador, you know, right of nature is important in the context of the, the con in the constitution, you know, a real case we can discover, you know. Uh, it's not just about the Ecuador, it's uh, the light of nature, you know, the advancing the near neighbor country in, in Latin America and uh, also the world, you know. Uh, new country, the Bolivia 2010, they, they adapt, you know, this kind of light of nature. I mentioned about the light of mother, you know, some Pachamama or Sumacausa, you know, this kind of concept. Uh, 2014, you know, in Colorado, USA also, uh, you know, even a, a state, you know, but the Colorado, you know, uh, adopted this kind of concept. And then 2014 as well, New Zealand, and then 2015, this year is quite important because, you know, the Roman Catholic, you know, the Pope Francis, you know, mentioned about some ecological, some, you know, uh, turning, you know. Uh, in the morning, you know, the, some uh, Dr. Che Chen mentioned about, you know, the Pope Francis is a history, you know. The Francis, the, the name of some, you know, the Pope of, you know, this, the Francis name, uh, the, the came after some, you know, in the honor of the Saint Francis of Assis, actually, you know. So the kind of, some, he, he was called some, you know, the patron saint of ecology, we can say. And then 2016, Colombia constitution, you know, was so adapted this kind of concept. Mexico City, 2017, and then 2017, the, the state of the, the Pernambuco in, in Brazil, you know, also in, adapted this kind of, you know, right of nature, you know, something like that, you know, this kind of uh, concept is spread over, you know, to the neighbor country, you know, and then USA, you know, New Zealand, a lot of them, you know, countries as well. So, uh, how to internalize it to the light of nature, you know? In international level or international environmental politics, we can easily find out that 2015, the party agreement, you know, uh, talking about some, you know, climate change issues with the, all of the member states, you know, came and then talking a lot of this kind of how we depend the climate change impact, you know? And then 2015, UNFCC climate talk, you know, the provide the platform the sharing knowledge and the embedding light of nature in the international and domestic institutions around the world. You know, now I think it's uh, still this is international level. This light of nature as a concept, uh, the inserted into some, you know, embedded into some, you know, some, some institution, also some kind of some, you know, new alternative or some new idea, you know, something like that. Uh, legal entity as well, this individual in international effort is just combining now into the, some emerging movement for the, the universal declaration of light nature. It's like some, you know, the, we, we know about, you know, the universal declaration of human light. You know, we can say easily, but, you know, 
if, if somebody talk about universal declaration of light of nature, it's slightly, you know, you know, a little bit, some, 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 the pillar is different, you know, it, it is possible. We can, we can, you know, do asking about this kind of thing. But I think it's, uh, you know, in the near future, probably, you know, it's, it's uh, this kind of move, this kind of movement, you know, so, someday, you know, uh, some, 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 some institution or some, some international institution, probably, you know, they, they adapt uh, so the, some universal norm of some, you know, right of nature, I, I believe, you know. But uh, that is an internationalization process. But uh, still, I uh, already mentioned about still got some, a lot of some limitation, even the complete, you know, in academy or the, the many the low, low schools, you know, uh, between some, you know, this is ideal or practice, or well, this is a kind of development model or some, some, this is some economic protection, you know. Dr. Lee also mentioned about the, the, this way of some governance debate, you know. The governance can have of some, you know, uh, uh, issues already, you know, there's some involved. When we talk about some, you know, right of nature or derecho de la naturaleza. So research question is simple, you know, what kind of some debate in academic level, you know, or literature exist. Then uh, many academic researchers are debating to find out this real meaning, such as a legal entity, you know, through the, some, you know, law school or some new ecological concept, you know, ecologist also, you know, mentioned about this one. And this is kind of some political ideology or some, you know, the Green Party or some Green Movement or Green Populism, you know, all of these kinds of, you know, the, the terms involved uh, in the field of some, you know, political ideology concept, the environment of governments, you know, and then model or something like that. Uh, especially in, the, in a lot, around us, a lot of terms, you know, academic level, uh, in, the, in, in case of some, you know, the field of some interdisciplinary study, you know, every kind of some, you know, the academic level now talking or discussing about, you know, the concept of light of nature. A case study, we must, you know, uh, find out, you know, between some, you know, reality or rhetoric, you know, in the field of some social, economy or environmental policy, you know, I, uh, I brought, I, I, you know, brought some uh, the ecological case, you know, uh, like some, you know, Dr. Lee, right? but, but slightly different case, you know, and then finally, I mentioned about, you know, what kind of limitation exist, you know, the first question, you know, in the find out some answer. Now it's a who govern and the priority question, you know, it's slightly important. Because uh, uh, if declare about the light, uh, nature has a light, you know, so uh, the right, uh, uh, you know, among the, some of the state, nature or civil society, even the currently, you know, the indigenous community, they got some, you know, uh, got some, you know, the priority anyway, when they using some, the concept of right of nature, right there. Uh, from the state, you know, sometimes they use some of the right of nature for uh, making some, some, you know, uh, national policy or economic policy or some, you know, environmental policy as well. Nature, I don't know, still silence, you know, but instead of nature, there's many other some actors, for example, state or civil society, yeah? they, they argue about, you know, some, you know, uh, not like that. Yeah. And the civil society also, also so, uh, the, the importance of some, you know, the government actor, you know, currently we can find out some, you know, in the Hena's community or so the movement, you know, uh, Yasuni was also, you know, the, the, a lot of some in the Hena's community, they, you know, raise their voice, you know, and then, then uh, fighting against uh, some, some, some China or some, something like that, you know. And we, we can understand, you know, because, you know, in the, in the, in, based on some right, you know, it dissolve anyway to fighting against some, you know, something like that. Uh, David Humphrey, 2015, you know, conclude the political tool for public authority to assert light of assess the nature for papered or local or national electors. Something like that. Still, you know, the, the concept of uh, uh, right of nature, you know, that is some, you know, complete, complete with other light, for example, light of the state, human light, Property light, you know, animal light, the gay right, you know, the woman's right, a lot of light, you know, to, around around our our you know, some you know, community anyway, you know. 
uh, still struggling anyway to find out, you know, the real concept of right. And then, uh, but even though we understanding, you know, the right, when we talk about the right of nature, suddenly the time is changed. The transition from environmental right to right of nature, you know, that way. That that is a song, I think is a definitely uh, quite important to some, you know, transition process at the moment, you know. But even the start of some Latin America or Ecuador, you know. So a uh, right basis approach is break away from the traditional environmental regulatory system. You know, regard nature as a property was not legalized you know, to managing de degradation of the environment rather than prevent it. You know? Slightly changed now. And then uh, with the 2008 uh, Ecuadorian uh, some constitution, Ecuador became the, the first country and then uh, the world codified the right of nature. But Ecuadorian does, is the constitution is the specifically the chapter seven, we already you know, that mentioned about 71, 74, recognized the, the in alien is right of the ecosystem to exist and flourish, give people the authority the petition on the, the behavior of the ecosystem and they require the government of the remedy violation of this right or something like that. So uh, we must remember, you know, or we must recognize, you know, uh, I know, you know, in Latin America, the, the environmental life for human being is a started in the, with the, by the constitution, in starting country, I remember the, the Chile, you know, in 1980s, Constitution, they put some, you know, the environmental light. It's a, in the first time in Latin American, you know, the, the environmental policy was something like that. And then currently, you know, uh, with 2000, the, the 21st century, we are talking about some, you know, right of nature, you know, the, 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 you know, the mood is to change. The another school participation and alternative development model, you know, we must, we, we can ask about, you know, uh, for example, through the, some ecological economist, economists, you know, they mentioned about, you know, right of nature, it look like some, some, some reconceptualization of well-being and quality of life, a brain bibir, we can say about, you know, reconceptualization of the human relation with nature, you know, the human being and nature must necessarily some, you know, the balancing, something like that, you know. And then the third, the third case, you know, the deep critics of the, the, the Lionel model of the history and development, which crit critically, you know, the strongly criticized about the European model, for example, you know, the post, uh, post modernist, you know, some some post development de developmentalist, you know, they love this kind of them, you know, critics anyway, with the light of nature, right? recognition of the value of the origin in the Hannah's culture and knowledge and the recognition of national and regional sovereignty is something like that, you know. A lot of this kind of, sort of idea now debating, you know. We can move to maybe a little bit, you know, the, the difficult to understand, you know, uh, the political ecology or political ecologist, you know. Uh, I categorize, you know, slightly different level or some the category, you know, the Indianist culturalist or eco echoist or some the post developmentalist, a socialist, or some eco Marxist, you know, some school you know, with different level or different emphasis about, you know, right of nature. They read a uh, different way of some development, a uh, new way of some, you know, development, or some, you know, something like that. I cannot mention a lot about this kind of thing, you know, just, a, just you know, this kind of debate exists anyway, you know, in the, in the field of some political ecology. We must remember the other school also, you know, find out from the social justice school, you know, right of nature with the three R. One R we can say about redistribution. You know, in case of Latin America, you know, the 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 social kind of some, you know, in equality of society is many politician or some, you know, civil society they mention about, you know, uh, equality society remove some, you know, social inequality. Uh, by borrowing some, you know, right of nature, that you know, strongly emphasize some redistribution, you know, and then recog recognition also important acceptance of the cultural difference and the importance of the environment, you know, that is a recognition. The third all we can say representation. That is, I think, is a governance, you know, 
multi multi level governance you know when you talk about the inclusion in decision making process you know some indianas community also you know also the civil society you know was important even the nature also was an important actor was to include you know this kind of thing so the one now is as a redistribution the second all is a recognition the third all is a representation you know the social justice school mentioned about you know this kind of right of nature strong involved anyway you know okay uh, but mentioned about you know the, about the second question too in between rhetoric and reality you know uh, even we understanding or the debate was struggling with many uh, the, the many fields of some academy social scientist well, political, some, you know, uh, ecologic politi politician, you know, a lot of the eco Marxists, you know, a lot, a lot of this kind of school involved there. But, uh, you know, it's kind of some dualistic in some approach. Still, this, this concept of light of nature exists in between rhetoric and theology. Yeah, you know. So many school, many scholars, you know, mentioned about Ecuador still maintain the, the anthropocentric and neoliberal logic of development based on the exploitation activity. Uh, the Dr. Lee mentioned about the Yasuni, you know, the, the, the petrol development process, you know. Uh, that was the extraction of natural resources. It's a crucial aspect of the development. The strategy of the country has been justified by the government to emphasize on the necessity to achieve some social justice, especially poverty elevation, you know, like that. Right of nature is beautiful rhetoric, you know. Some some school scholars, you know, emphasize that it's not neology, you know. Uh, however, the, the implementation of the, this concept based on the more environmental justice has been read behind this, this country it depends on revenue from oil extraction, for example, the Asuni case, you know, the, to follow the more social justice way of the compensation, redistribution, even economic growth, and less focus on environmental justice or right of nature in herself. I did not, I, I did not, you know, escape the, the right to, to in itself, you know, in herself, you know, emphasize them, you know, as a human being, you know. Uh, so, you know, strongly criticize about, you know, the right of nature is a still rhetoric, you know, uh, just, to, to, just using some, you know, social justice or some, you know, tools or some, something like that. That is a uh, critics say. Uh, also, it's the same idea, you know. Many the the others and the, the political scientists or political economists is mentioned about, you know, resource de resource dependence economy, you know, in case of Ecuador, you know, still this country uh, the the oil and mining comprise almost 30 percent of Ecuadorian GDP and then approximately there's one third of Ecuadorian spending budget came from the, the petroleum product or something like that. Depends on some, you know, the, this kind of resource quite important. Also, Rafael Correa, you know, through the, the radio, it's a, some program, you know, he compares about it's a stupid that uh, some want to be forces to remaining like a beggars sitting on top of gold, you know. Mentioned about some, you know, the, the, the resource is quite important, you know. So the constitution in 2008 cannot survive with the, those economic ideology. This basic conflict raises some question of whether nature can truly have light in a country the, whose economy that the survive on the nature's exploitation, resource extraction, etc. cetera. You know? That I, I, I brought some the, the, the important some case, you know, uh, what kind of some you know resource development is now now implemented in, in Ecuador, you know. For example, in 2017, Ecuadorian government announced there's a concession. To about 2.2.4 million hectares of the land for mining explorations. You know, many of these exploratory concessions uh, previously, you know, protected forest or indigenous territory as well in headwater ecosystem and biodiversity has part of global importance. You know, UNESCO strongly criticized about this kind of you know the case anyway. The second case, you know, slightly critical way. Many the others, you know, the critics arguing about this is kind of some economic nationalism, you know. Uh, the the applied the, the concept of Schumacher outside, 
is such as a way of the linkage, the state to sovereignty and the management of natural resource. Remember what, you know, resource nationalism, you know, in Latin American economy, you know, so it's quite a, to the popular sometime, the moment, you know, it's the same, you know, the scholars is arguing about this is the same, you know, and then the, the other some, you know, critics, the concept or terms of uh, regulate, regulations and capture society. You know, in the process, we can discover a lot of some corruption, you know, by the bureaucracy, you know, sometimes like that. That's why not just about, you know, democratic way of some uh, distribution or some participation, you know, or representation, something like that, you know, still this kind of, you know, the, the bad thing, you know, uh, some bar strong against some this kind of, you know, the good meaning of some, you know, right of nature. Uh, the conclusion you can say about, you know, confusing original identity, that is important. Uh, many uh, the the law school or you know they they you know arguing about you know this kind of concept. The text use the term of uh, naturaleza nature and la pachamama the mother earth. These two extremely broad concepts are likely to confuse the cult and legit like like you know the, the, the judges you know when they identify what is the meaning of nature. What is the, the another meaning of the Pachamama, you know? you know? With a different language or different culture, different understanding, you know? Even what, you know, we, we must remember about, you know, the, the, the article, the Prohibition 71, you know? Uh, through the, um, you know, 71, the, the, the Constitution declare about, you know, the nature or Pachamama, you know, got us some right, something like that, you know? That is confusing, you know? Law school critically arguing about this kind of, you know, the concept or identity. Problem of implementation still, you know, existing. So the, the Kalyan Pichari, the famous scholar, criticized about, you know, right of nature. This concept is a kind of some catch-all, you know. The, 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 you know, the modern nature of rhetoric is broad. Waiting nature's, you know, right against the other right, you know application or enforcement of nature's, nature's right is selective and does not necessarily promote environmental protection, you know. The strong critics, you know. You know. However, the beyond some, this kind of legal identity argument was critical viewpoint, you know. I, I think it's uh, this, the light of nature concept brought about a new development argument, you know, from the Latin America. And, a, a kind of some opportunity to, to rethinking about nature in herself as an important actor within this multi level governance, you know, uh, toward making more ecological civilization society in the future, you know. So I know, you know, there are a lot of some conflict with them the, the finding to find out some meaning, you know, law school or, you know, social scientist, economist, even, you know, the international politics. You know, the governance school, you know, all kinds of, you know, academic level, they start to, you know, the arguing about, you know, or find out some, you know, the real meaning of the right of nature. I think it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's not bad anyway, you know. This is a, they, they want to find out some, you know, new way of some, you know, the, the, the idea or some, you know, some concept or some, you know, related to some, you know, some development, you know, some, or for, for society or some, you know, even more some, some ecological civilization, society, something like that, you know. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Ha. It was a very comprehensive review from the theoretical perspective to the cases. Well, in terms of right of nature, right of nature, it sounds like exploitation right of the land nature. Okay, um, we've done all those three presentations and we have like a good 40-50 minutes of discussion. So floor is widely open. So if you have any questions or comments, please just step in, uh, turning on your microphone. And meanwhile, I have some something yeah, to share with you. I just uh, I want to ask to first to Professor Chong, 
who gave a very insightful presentation with regard to the trade balance, trade balance or imbalance between Korea and Latin America. Uh, for last like 30, 40 years, when since the relationship between Korea and Latin America began intensified, there was one single voice from Latin America with regard to the trade imbalance. While Korea export had a lot of goods with great deal of uh, value addition, while the Latin America ex export to Korea very little, also, in terms of value addition, they are way inferior to, to Korea. That was the usual argument of Latin American counterparts to Korea, starting from the trade imbalance to the value addition issues. I think this research is one of the pioneering ones to provide some answer to this usual like complaints from our, our counterparts. Your adjusted uh, graph will be persuasive enough to discuss more to the uh, our counterpart. I think my question here is whether your research consider the Latin American export not only to Korea but also to third party. I don't think it's included in this analysis, but if you can include consider this. Uh, will be more enriching. For instance, we export a lot of intermediary goods to Mexican uh, factories owned by our conglomerates and to target for both Latin America and the United States market. We don't import those directly. So it's more like a multilateral trade issue rather than bilateral trade regime. So if you can have this more comprehensive view, it will be much more persuasive. And that this value addition can, can be in the hands of Latin America, especially Mexican case. A Brazilian case is different, apparently. And so if you, I'm, I'm sure this is a kind of a beginning of your own research, but there's a lot to be done in the future horizon, I guess. That was my one question to Dr. Chung. And then for two ecologists in Ecuador, um, Dr. Lee first mentioned the difference between Brazil and Ecuador. I, I think there's a little difference because international attention was directed much more to the Brazilian side because, and they had to react they had to produce a lot of rhetoric and created an image of preservation in the Brazilian side Amazon. Meanwhile, much less attention to be given to Ecuador. And then apparently there was more, more destruction. However, the, the, I think the nature is very similar as I have echoed. Exploitation right to the nature is being fully explored and fully explored by those two countries at the same time. Especially on the Bolsonaro regime, he, he is trying to revive this developmentalism in, in Amazonian area as well. So the, the pattern and result may be slightly different, but the nature seems to be pretty identical. So every single country have a very strong determination to develop their resources wherever it is located. And then they like to cover this in the name of the preservation of something. But in the end, so they will, they will strongly drive this developmental mentalism there. So we've been discussing this for many, many years, I think. I don't know whether there's any update vis-a-vis -vis this development and preservation in those two countries. I mean, Rafael Correa was, was a big mouse in, 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 in emphasizing their right and naturaleza and everything, Indian right especially. And then he didn't even recognize the particular Indian tribe in his teleconference or whatever. So everybody began to fool him, whether he is genuine in, in what, what he's saying like that. So there are challenges, I guess. I mean, this is a little bit of a question, a little bit of a comment for, for two of you. Okay, that, that's all from my side. And um, if you have any like answers, so you can go for it, Professor Chong. Um, firstly, thank you for your uh, comments. Uh, 
but firstly, I have to check whether uh, the decomposition methodology that I uh, have used can derive the exact value, uh, exact the amount of value added that comes from the specific, the third uh, country or a third uh, party. So after checking uh, in this issue, uh, yeah. I'll consider it and put it in into my final paper. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you very and much. we see the uh, ICIO table seems to be, uh, it was very useful, but they don't update this recently. I was ah. looking for the new one, but do, do you have any updates for, for like current ones? Ah, yes. Um, uh, it takes time to uh, release data because uh, data from uh, yeah. various countries have to be yeah. collected firstly. So I know that this year, uh, the 2020 edition will be released in this year. So, really yeah, yeah, it, I, as far as I remember, uh, it covers from uh, 1995 to, uh, from 1995 to 2018. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that is the official data, uh, more likely like a country data. Uh, I think it's based on HS code. Uh, because it's officially available like data but if you get down to the product level uh, you may need an access to the company data I mean, I mean for instance Samsung mobile phones assembles everywhere and then we export parts and components but depending on the the rules of origin and their tariff structure the package we are import, exporting are very, very different from one country to another. So some, some countries receive module and some countries only receive the very, very raw materials. I mean, chips, the chips should be embedded in the, in the motherboard, in, in their own soil. So that kind of detail, if you can explore this, that kind of detail uh, will make a, make a, like a breakthrough research, I guess. So, so I think the next level of research should be focusing on the like product oriented ones. Yeah, so thank you very much. Most promising ones are like uh, mobile and, and electronics, right? Yes. yes. Uh, I'll research more on that uh, in my future study. And uh, I, uh, since I left my email address on the, my first yeah, page yeah. on the first material, so if you have any interest or uh, yeah, so anyone who is interested in my uh, topic, mm -hmm. uh, please send me an email to make, uh, to develop further studies. Yeah, yeah, very good. Textile is also an area, interesting field. Automobile, apparently. Yeah. Very good. Dr. Lee, or Han Ha. Oh, yes, um, thank you for the, um, the Professor Han Kwa. Uh, to be um, the moderating today, right? And then um, thank you for your insights and for um, comments and some of the to less extent the question. But um, uh, actually, I did not that much the include. In other words, I did not that much, I guess, the uh, further research on that uh, particular issue that the um, about the, the ears. Because uh, um, I do not actually look into the Bolsonaro or Lenin Moreno, which is current regime. I was looking to the, actually, the year span was uh, between 2005 and up to 2015, where the Rafael Correa was the governing, mm -hmm. while, while the ruler was governing. And mm -hmm. also the, the, so that was actually, they are the political ideology are the same. They are actually, they're saying that they are leftist one. But then in reality, as uh, Hasang was uh, uh, criticizing, arguing that the, in reality was not uh, actually uh, taking place, but whereas I guess I view that in terms of graph, in terms of the actually the data we can can find out was the, the Brazilian one was more attentive to the international norm, international you know, I guess the uh, NGOs the um, approaches. So that was actually quite different. That that was one that I like to kind of emphasize why the I mean those other countries you know the national level the same. They are actually highly dependent on the natural resources. You know in this case the China. Right, and then their political allergy is the same. So I was, I was kind of saying the comparative studies, but then actually the the Brazil was more authentic, whereas the Ecuador was not. So that was actually my first, the, my uh, 
the interesting, the, for me, it was interesting question. Then I was trying to kind of develop, uh, delve into uh, trying to find why. And then there was the, the I NGO was actually played, you know, a critical role in shaping the um, Brazilian uh, development, uh, whereas the um, Ecuador was not. That was actually, uh, I love to, to mention and stress out. Um, yes. I mean, one thing, is it related to something uh, with the nature of the products they produce while the uh, Ecuadorian Amazon, there are a lot of like uh, hard resources like gas and oil. Meanwhile, the Brazilian side is mostly soft resources of agricultural goods. Do, do we have any like large oil well there in Brazilian side? I don't think there is any. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, actually, I didn't that much think about that, that kind of very, the, the basic level, because as you mentioned that the, the export items are quite different. Because the, um, the number one export item from the Brazil, Brazil to China is soya. And then the, yeah. uh, what is the number one item from the Ecuador to the China is actually petroleum related. So that was actually the important thing that I have to really looking, uh, take into account when you really um, down into the comparative studies. But thank you for your, you know, uh, indicating that uh, that issue though. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean that soya is 100% safe or nature friendly, mm -hmm. but I mean, from the outlook, the, the, the oil well seems to be much more destructive. And I highly recommend the movie, The Yasuni Man. It's a documentary. Uh, uh, produced by an, an American filmmaker and it's, it's very very interesting and very insightful and he's been there he sneaked there for many years and and, and completed this wonderful documentary wow. and the uh, living also nature of those people there as well Thank and you. then yeah this company business large <laughs> conglomerates even from China yeah what can we do <laughs> Anything, Dr. Ha? No, nothing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can, I can kind of round it, another round. I can kind of. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Please. And uh, well, floor is widely open. Please participate. You can speak in Korean language or Spanish or Portuguese. Yeah. Just choose whatever language yeah. you feel most comfortable. I um, think. Actually, yeah. uh, I have a I have a question towards the uh, Dr. Jung. Because uh, thank you for yeah. your yeah. Um, the um, interesting the um, topic that you actually um, research on it, and. Um, um, I think that when you are actually um, studying about the trade issue, and then you're looking to the um, trade between the trade balance, right? Between Korea and Latin America. But then you have to look into the, because you found the seven countries, right? As your case studies. Um, I wonder, I mean, I guess the, in terms of the, the rank, right? I, I didn't look at that very carefully on you, why you chose that there are seven countries rather than other countries among the 33 countries. But then you have to, I, I guess, in a way to include the, um, with the FTA, the country are actually having the FTA with the Korea or not. That is actually having very much differentiation in terms of just trade balance and also the value added issue. So you have to kind of look into that one as a, the, the variable that uh, change the uh, trade balance and also in terms of value added issue. So, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, your comments. Uh, firstly, uh, the seven countries that I have mentioned are the maximum number in uh, in the ICIO table. So I I could only use for uh, I could only use seven countries. And secondly, uh, when it comes to the uh, to the FK, I think that it'll be better to um, apply this FTA issue when I start when I start to uh, research each country with uh, Korea. So. Uh, it also, uh, I'll research more on that and I'll consider it. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you.
Uh, do you have any comment, Professor Ha? No, no, I don't have. <laughs> um, I have a, I mean, because I found it very interesting from the, the presentation that the uh, Professor Ha uh, had did. Um, so what is you trying to arguing about? What are you trying to actually finding out from the, your uh, study? Because uh, I found that you have very you know, extensive knowledge of the studying the, the, the right of nature related in literatures. But um, what did you actually digging out from the existing knowledge on the, um, the right of nature? And then what, what are you trying to you are actually arguing from? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you mean the, some, some resource or methodology to find out some, you know, the concept of life of nature, you know? I think it says everywhere. So everyone now talking about, you know, right of nature, you know? Even the, the you know, you know, you know, the political the politician as well, you know? Easily, usually they're using this kind of terms. You know? Journalist, you know, also, it's not just about social scientists, you know. Uh, but uh, one day I realized, you know, many people using just the, the terms of light of nature, how they understand, even they understand that these terms of light of nature, just as somebody use, and then just the following, you know, also some normal, some term. You know, that's why, you know, the, I got a curiosity about, you know, the, the find out, you know, what its meaning and what kind of, you know, the, the debate, you know, actually, you know, in academic level exists, you know, that's why I gathering together a lot of some material, uh, talk, talking a lot of some, you know, light of nature, and then I selected, you know, this important some articles, you know, which, which one is some, some represented, you know, the, the, the huge conflict or well, debating anyway, yeah. So I, I, I some, you know, provide a little bit with uh, some appeal, some audience, you know, with this, con with this session, you know. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, the, what, what was the most compelling to you when you're actually digging into the concept? What was the most compelling? What was more convincing? For you to actually adopt that uh, the notion of the right of nature into the actually the case of the Latin America, because we do have a as you know starting with the all the provisions of the you know right of nature that is provided by the Ecuadorian case, right? Mm -hmm. But then, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, just words, yeah, but right, but. Actually, and then you were talking about the different, I guess, Western side and different, like it's all the, you know, even the African side, I guess, that there is a talking about yes, the nature yes, of, you know. They got right? yeah, yeah, um, so what was actually concept that, that is most compelling to you to actually, uh, you know, well, and utilize, employing to the case of Latin America that, because the, as I be believe that the, your institute is trying to finding a alternative development path. That is actually linked to, to the, the Pachamama, which is the nature of, you know, the right. But then, you know, there, have, there got to be, I guess, the studying further that is existing knowledge, right? From the other, other, other I guess, disciplines, other, you know, regions they're talking about. So uh, I guess you, you guys are studying a lot, I guess, already though. So uh, what was actually most the um, crystallized, like most the compelling one that you guys were, you know, convincing most? That, that is uh, sometimes, you know, uh, came from some, you know, you mentioned already about, you know, this project, you know, uh, actually uh, our project involves, you know, of looking for some, you know, ecological from the, the civilization, something like that. That's why uh, the, in the process of some, you know, a new idea involves in our project, you know, that uh, the most representative one is the right of nature, you know, and that is, that is true. Yeah? Uh, honestly speaking, you know, uh, I don't know that, that this, the, our the, the Korean society also we we must prepare some you know uh, new terms of some you know uh, uh, environmental life or some you know with some um, in the process some constitution change you know someday still we we got some old con constitution here and then the the current government you know did, did not 
you know, to develop much more about, you know, in the line of some, you know, the kind of some environmental line. Probably in the near future, you know, in our society, probably we must uh, start to debate about, you know, new terms, new value of some, you know, kind of some, you know, right of nature. I, I know it's, it's a difference can say well meaning, you know, because of the society or the, the, the political economy difference, you know, like that. That's why comparing, uh, you know, pre, the I think it's a pre-research to find out uh, to help to our society or something like that <laughs> for you know the, the kinds of some the policy suggestion or some idea suggestions like that. Yeah. Probably that that kind of curiosity or some you know, motivation, I think it's a it's just a play a great law anyway to you know every every day you know every program we are talking about some you know right of nature and something like that. I still I, I recognize you know the, the concept of life later is, is quite positive anyway you know to even there are a lot of some you know the critics or some you know the, the hardship or some you know something like that but. I believe, you know, I, I believe actually, in a personal level, honestly speaking, you know, I want to read some of this concept, also way of some positive, you know, yeah. Because uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to read it. 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 I'm going to go on, please. Because um, uh, um... I mean, because you just kind of uh, me as well that I do interest, I am interested in the looking to the environmental uh, issue, particularly in uh, Ecuador as well. And then as I mentioned uh, in my presentation very briefly that the, there was a presidential elections mm. took place in the Ecuador and then the, and then Yaku was the, the uh, having the actually finally the third position, so he's not going to able to um, enter into runoff. That's right? too bad. But then, so Arauz Arauz was actually having the um, the final, I guess, the presidential elections, I guess, the runoff system, right? Um. So given that, uh, I guess the um, Ecuador, in a way, moving towards to to developing, in a way, trying to kind of looking uh, caring for the environment. But uh, I don't think that that much the Ecuador really caring, uh, taking care of the environment that the looking more the post, not the post development is more neo developmental way of the um, government ha having the institutionalized, I, I believe. So, um, um, so what, what do you think about the, 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 um, the regime that will be held in, um, that in terms of the a development will be uh, will be moving forward. Well, you mean the the the, the, the future regime or some? Yes, yes. Well, I I, I cannot prospect <laughs> that that mm, I don't know. Even the, the 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 final the final election is not that finishing, isn't it? Still, still remaining the the last last. I'm not sure about the the, the process, but. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, ju I just, I just analyzed some something like Korea, it, it, you know, as a left government, where some, you know, it started some recentralization, he mentioned about economic nationalism, even by using some, you know, the right of nature in, 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 in constitution, you know, something like that, that's why, uh, I don't know, you know, in your future, who wins some, you know, the, the final election or the presidential election, you know, and then, I don't know exactly, but you know, you're right. You know, the case of Ecuador, you know, it's quite the, the, the important was the symbolic, not just of a symbolic. You know, when we discussed about you know the the ultimate rhetoric, you know, the in between, you know, something like that. Yeah, we can we can find out, you know, in in your future, what kind of some regime coming, you know, what kind of mm -hmm. some, the environment mm -hmm. policy, you know. 네, 예, 하 박사님, 김남미 네. 대통령이 어떻게 바뀌고 선거 결과가 어떻게 나타나냐에 기대를 아직도 하세요? 어... 질문한 이태혁 박사에게도 같은 질문. <웃음> 어... 지금 사실은 뭐그 
자연권 자체가 스타팅이 그 에콰도르 인근 거잖아요. 네. 그러니까 지금 말씀하신 것처럼 사실은 이제 그런 대표성이 사실 있는 거고 아까 지금 우리 학 교수님께서 말씀하신 것처럼 물론 뭐 우리 곽 교수님 말씀하신 것처럼 사실은 맞습니다. 뭐그 리더 라틴 아메리카 솔직히 이제 뭐 구조적인 맥락에서 봤을 때 리더가 뭐 바뀐다고 뭐 이렇게 바뀌겠습니까, 그렇죠? 근데 이제 그럼에도 그럼에도 불구하고 예, 어떤 의미가 있는 것이고 그리고 솔직히 지금 야구 같은 경우가 어 인디 빠차 아, 빠차 꽃띠인가요? 그 인디언스 무브먼트의 그 서포트를 받고 있는 친구고 이 친구가 이제 가지고 있는 보팅 파워가 있는 거잖아요. 그러니까 이제 그 친구가 누구를 믿느냐에 따라서 어, 사실 이제 어, 원투고 가는 아라우스나 라소가 다음 정권을 가지게 될 텐데. 어, 그런 명세 왔을 때는 어떻게든 간에 끌어안고 가야 되는 사실 이제 부분들도 사실은 있는 거. 거 그, 그래서 이제 성공을 했다고 치고 본인의 이데올로기대로 정책을 펼친다고 했을 때 중국 나가라. 우리 석유 안 캔다. 이제부터는 네이처다. 뭐 이렇게 하고 할수 있을까? 네, 네. 그렇게 과연 사는 걸 국민들이 또 원할까? 그렇죠. 네. 지금 이런 상황에서 맞습니다. 그게 참 어려운 문제라서 결국은 네. 우리를 비롯한 OECD 국가들이 아주 편하게 얘기하는 뭐 보존의 미학이라든가 이것도 그린 뉴딜이 가능하다라든가 뭐 이런 얘기를 그들한테 할 수는 없고 참 중남미도 어떻게 보면 두 마리 토끼를 잡을 수 있는 방법이 있을까 뭔가 좀 보호도 하면서 먹고 살고도 할수 있는 그런 묘책이 있을까 핵심은 그거 같아요. 근데 그걸 스스로 찾을지 외부적인 어떤 혁신이 인자가 도입이 될지 하는 과연 그래서 이건 철저하게 좀 아이템에 관한 연구를 좀 해봐야 되지 않을까 하는 생각도 아이, 좀 들기도 합니다. 아이템. 네, 네, 아, 네. 마, 네 마, 맞습니다. 사실 이제 그런 맥락에서 저는 사실 이제 마지막에 제안한 게 이제 남남 합력 얘기한 거고 그런 맥락, 맥락에서 우리나라가 이제 그린 뉴딜 얘기를 한 거고 어, 사실 제가 지금 뭐 이렇게 제안서를 하나 쓰고 있는 게 있는데 그게 이제 IDB 거거든요. 근데 거기다 보면 사실 이제 에카도르 프로젝트고 그게 지금 보면 ICT 부분들을 이제 가지고 하려고 하는 거에서 어, 그런 것들은 보면 이제 그 이코 프렌들리하게 이제 되는 거고 그렇게 되면 결과적으로 이제 국가 레벨뿐만 아니라 로컬 레벨에서도 어떤 형태든 간에 혜택이 가는 어, 부분인 거니까. 음. 네, 그런 그런 면에서 봤을 때는 이제 그 전형적인 뭐 너무 약간 이제 어 올드 패션한 얘기일 수도 있긴 하지만 에, 그냥 그냥 그남그 결과적으로 이제 우리 한국과 같은 게 남남 협력 형태로 아니면 뭐 삼각 혁명이 됐든지 뭐 그런 맥락에서 갔을 때에 간다면 이제 아까 그 교수님이 된 것처럼 아이템 하나 찾아서 가면은 이렇게 같이 이제 발전할 수 있는 어떤 그런 어, 모멘텀이 되지 않을까 생각이 들어요. 뭐, 코로나로 인해서 하나 바뀐 게 있다면. 그렇게 IT 디지털 경제를 강조를 많이 해도 훔쩍도 않던 개도국들이 지금 스스로 알아서 망 깔려고 하고 뭐 여러 가지로 전자 정보 같은 거 도입하려고 하는 움직임들이 활발히 보이는 거로 봐서는 뭔가 변화의 단초가 보이는 것 같기도 해요. IT가 또 답일 수도 있다는 생각이 들긴 합니다. 근데 이제 요원하죠. 사실 그것도 우리가 수십 년 동안 쌓아올린 걸또 단기간에 할수 있을까 없을까도 이게 참. 걱정이 되는 상황이기도 하고 네 그렇습니다. 그래서 우리 대통령 바뀌는 거에 너무 기대 안 했으면 하는 생각에서 잠시 말씀을 드리는 거 우리 뭐 어느 정도 논의가 많이 된것 같아서 세션은 또 여기서 마감할까요? 샤우이? 혹시 계속 경청해 주신 이미정 박사님 또한 말씀 코멘트 해 주시고 우리 끝내면 어떨까 합니다. 없어요. 예, <웃음> 네, 켜주세요. 오케이. 어, 안 들린다. 소리. 예, 네, 지금 좀 들려요. 제가 이어폰을 끼고 있었어 가지고요. 음. 들리십니까? 네, 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 들려요. 아니 뭐 제가 특별히 말씀드릴 거는 없고요. 뭐 아까 뭐그 아이템 얘기하시고 무슨 농업에 대한 얘기하시고 4차 산업혁명과 연관돼서 뭐 ICT랑 연관해서 그런 것들을 개발을 하는 거는 진짜 각 나라마다 굉장히 개별적으로 많은 전략이 있을 것 같아요. 브라질도 아까 뭐 말씀하시는 도중에 그 
에콰도르하고 이제 브라질 같은 경우에는 그뭐 이렇게 지향하는 어떠한 영역이 이제 좀 다르다 보니까 그런 거지만은 브라질 같은 경우에도 뭐 지금 어쩔 수 없이 이제 농업에 주로 이제 많이 이제 기대를 기대를 하고 거기에 의존을 많이 하고 있지만은 실질적으로 이 광물 같은 경우에도 그 개발에 있어서는 브라질도 많은 자원을 가지고 있기 때문에 그것을 할 수는 있지만 워낙 최근에 몇년 동안 굉장히 자연 재해가 많이 있었기 때문에 그걸 이끌던 대기업들이 지금 굉장히 어떻게 할 수가 없는 처지입니다. 그래서 이러한 것들이 우리가 생각했을 때이 브라질은 그래도 이제 좀 다양한 어떠한 다각적인 측면에서 산업이 발전되어 있었기 때문에 그것을 융통성 있게 현대에 맞는 어떠한 대, 그 대책을 강구를 할 수가 있겠지만은 이제 다른 어, 에콰도르라든지 아니면 이제 주로 1차 산업에 의존만 하는 이제 소, 소, 다양하지 않은 어떤 이게 좀 몇몇 개의 어떠한 상품, 아이템에 의존하는 국가로서는 그러한 어, 역량이 조금 부족하지 않나 그런 생각이 들고요. 그런 거에 맞춰서 아마 지금 나라별로, 국가별로 그것이 에, 전략적으로 좀 개발이 돼야 되지 않을까. 어, 현재 상태에서는 그런 것이 전 생각 어, 발표를 들으면서 좀 생각해 봤습니다. <웃음> 감사합니다. 네, 오늘 감사합니다. 참신하게 논문 세편 발표해 주신 세분 발표자한테 감사드리고 경청해 주신 여러분한테도 감사를 드립니다. 뭐 여기서 세션을 마치도록 할게요. 그럼 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Thank you very much. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. 감사합니다.